Hello everyone, welcome back to another lesson of Danny Poy, Actual Speaking. My name is Jennifer Clyde. It's lesson six, and today we will be talking about a very important person, a person you look up to, which would be your hero. So let's talk about that. Now when you talk about your hero, you first of all have to think about the reasons why you consider this person your hero. Now what is it about this person that is so great? Now be specific when praising your hero and think up examples of what this person did or does that is so heroic in your eyes, okay? Be personal when it comes to answering questions about your hero. But then again, remember to be concise, okay, when you talk about who your hero is. In other words, succinct statement more than a flowery speech. What I mean by that is be brief and to the point when talk about your hero. We'll practice doing that together in today's lesson, so hold your worries if you are worried, and let's begin with our first segment, which is warm up. Let's begin with our first segment of today's lesson, which happens to be warm up. And what do we do in this segment? We have to brainstorm. We're going to brainstorm. Think about cues that will help you talk about today's topic, which happens to be your hero. So as always, we are going to take a look at the five W's and how. Now, here's a quick test, everyone. By now, I hope you remember what the five W's are. What are they? Who, what, when, where, why, and how, okay? As long as you remember the five W's and how, you will have less trouble talking about whatever topic it is. Let's begin then. The first W is who. It's simple. So think to yourself, who, 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 who. Well, of course, you'll be talking about your hero. So think up who you'll be talking about today, okay? And the next W is what. Let's focus on things like what are his or her skills. What is this person good at? Also, what this person's personality traits are like? What is this person's personality like? What kind of person is he or she? Now, you may even talk about some attractive features, meaning talk about something that attracts people. This person may be very tall, good looking, beautiful, that may be very attractive to others. So talk about maybe their features, but briefly, not too much about their looks too much. And also their passions. What are they so dedicated to? Now, passions, qualities. Uh, well, qualities are very similar to, I guess, characteristics, but what are some qualities that this person has, okay? You can also talk about what is so alluring about this person. Allure means to attract. Now, what attracts you? What is so attractive about this person? Not looks wise, but perhaps, what this person has done or what this person thinks or how he or she thinks. So talk about what is so alluring. Also, you may mention dedication, this person's dedications or strengths and weaknesses. Of course, when it comes to any kind of talk, whichever topic it is, especially in an interview, you want to focus on the good points rather than the not so good points. So maybe talk about the weaknesses a little bit and focus more on the strengths, okay? Now, we also have what? Another group of what is what made an impact on your life, okay? What kinds of things this person did made an impact on your life, okay? What influenced you, in other words? Also, what do you admire about this person? What do you respect about this person? Now, and revere. Revere also means to have respect for someone, okay? Also, what is so inspiring about this person? If you have any memories of this person or memories that you shared with this person, you can mention that. So, mention the fond memories of he or she or the fond memories that you had with your hero, okay? And what about this? What ways are you drawn to him or her? What ways? Or uh, I guess you can also say why are you or what are the things that drew you to this person? Draw. Draw means to attract as well. So, in other words, simply put, what is so attractive? What is so special about this person that you are attracted to him or her. So think about the who and the what. What ways are you drawn to him or her? Let's check out some more. And we have when. Talk about when. Now think of when. What can you think of? You can talk about since when this person was your hero. And also, personal hero changed, meaning, I guess as a young girl or a young boy, you may have had a hero like Superman or Wonder Woman, right? But as you got older, your hero changes. Of course, it can change maybe twice, three times, eight times, ten times, even more. So talk about a personal hero that perhaps changed. Okay? You can talk about your childhood hero and then your hero at this point in life. Also, for how long is something you can mention. So for how long has this person been your hero? Now, we're brainstorming everyone. Don't think too much about this. Practice brainstorming the cues with me. Let's move on. The next one is where. Boom, we've got where. Then what can you think of? Where did you meet this person? Have you met this person? Okay, so talk about that. Or if you just heard about him or her, talk about when you heard about this person. Also, read about this person or watched a program, a documentary about him or her. So these are things you can also talk about when you are talking about your personal hero. We've also got why. Once again, why you are drawn to him. What are the factors that draw you to this person or her? Adore is another one. Adore pretty much means to love. Really, uh, I guess, consider this person as a very special person. So why you adore this person, why you admire her or him, why you have a high opinion of, okay? What does this mean? Have a high opinion of means, in other words, simply put, why you respect this person, okay? Why you think so highly of this person, and a very similar expression is why you look up to this person, why you respect him or her, or your hero. So we took a look at all the W's, now it's time for today's how. Now how he or she changed your life. Oftentimes when we talk about our heroes, people say he or she changed my life, okay? So you can talk about how this person influenced you in life. Perhaps if you made changes in life, took different steps, went a different way, you can mention that as well, and also made a difference made a difference in your life, meaning change your life in a good way, okay? So these are the basic W's and the how you can brainstorm when talking about any topic. Today, once again, we're focusing on heroes, so let's begin with today's actual talk. So Rachel, uh, the other day some people were asking me about my personal hero or having a discussion, and when they asked me, I, I had some trouble answering the question. So I want to pose that question to you. Oh, that's such a good question. You know, my hero all throughout my life was my mom. She is such a wonderful and intelligent woman. I always wanted to be just like her. She's mm. someone that helped me through thick and thin, you know, and she has a really charismatic uh, personality. People are just drawn to her. What about you? Do you have a hero? Or is there anyone you, were, you look up to? Well, when people ask me that, I, I have to say that there are people that I admire or maybe look up to a little bit, but I didn't have any one particular personal hero. Okay. As a hero, somebody you almost worship in, in, in a way and, and really try to emulate their life. That's true. Well, what are some qualities that you look for in a hero? What are some characteristics that you want to obtain? Well, the people I admired through, throughout life uh, were from various backgrounds and did many different things. So I couldn't choose one, but I would pick something I liked about a particular person. Um, like my advisor in college, he was very open and, and um, 
liked to, to try new things. Oh, okay. um, so that inspired me to try new things in life. Um, when I followed somebody like Steve Jobs, the way uh, he was very driven, right. I, I liked uh, to, I tried to emulate those type of things. Yeah, you know, Steve Jobs seems like a really big role model for a lot of people these days, yeah. doesn't he? But, you know, like you said, people who are driven and open-minded, these are some great qualities that I look for, too, for a hero. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you were younger, you didn't have a specific hero, you said, right? No, no, other than Superman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really. He's a great hero. He has all the qualities that I feel like a hero does embody, doesn't mm -hmm. he? Well, someday I want to be a hero to my two sons. Me too. I hope I'm a hero to my children, too. Mm -hmm. Did you understand the conversation between Peter and Rachel? It's today's actual talk. Now, let's quickly think about what these two people mentioned in their conversation. They were, of course, talking about their heroes. What did Rachel say? Who was her hero? I think she said that her mother was her hero, and she's been her hero for a very long time. Now, what about Peter? Hmm. He said that it's very difficult to choose one particular person, so he doesn't really have a hero that he did mention that as a little boy, he looked up to, okay? He had a high opinion of Superman. I kind of uh, did have a high opinion of, I think, Wonder Woman when I was little as well, but I don't know. I don't think it would be easy for me to pick one particular hero as well, but for sure, my mother is my hero as well. Let's take a look at the conversation between Peter and Rachel line by line. First of all, uh, Peter says, Rachel, the other day, some people were asking me about my personal hero. This is a great way to start a conversation. He's not saying, oh, Rachel, by the way, who's your hero? Okay, he's making it smooth with a flow, a natural flow, and bringing up the question. And he says, and I had some trouble answering the question. And he asks, so I want to pose that question to you. Now, pose, what's this word? People pose when we take photographs, right? We do this when taking pictures. But of course, in this case, Peter is saying, I want to ask that question to you. I want to forward that question to you. So simply put, it means to ask in this situation. So he says, someone asked me who my personal hero was, but I couldn't answer. So I'm curious, who is your personal hero? I want to pose that question to you. So tell me, right? So what did Rachel say? She says, oh, that's such a good question. Another great way to continue a conversation. And then she says, my hero all throughout my life, okay? All throughout my life meaning entire life. Since I was very little up until now, all throughout my life was who? Was my mom, okay? So her personal hero is mother, okay? Rachel's mother. And she explains what kind of person she is, okay? She says, she is such a wonderful and intelligent woman. She begins by telling Peter about what kind of person her mother is. And then she says, I always wanted to be just like her. Now, for those of you that tuned in in lesson five, we did have a very similar expression as this, okay? When even talking about dreams, you can say, I've always wanted to be or become something and also be just like someone. Exactly. You can say it in this situation too. I've always wanted to be just like her, meaning exactly like my mom. She's someone that helps me through thick and thin, okay? This is an expression you can use in many situations, especially when you're talking about your personal experiences. So Rachel says, she's someone, my mother, helped me through thick and thin. Thick and thin. Thick and thin. But this means through the good times and the bad times. Uh, we're talking about good fortune and bad fortune. Through good times and difficult times. So through thick and thin. We'll be going over this in just a bit. So hang in there. And then let's take a look. We do uh, have a bit more from what Rachel says. She says, and she has a really charismatic personality. Mention something about this personality or this person's personality, but once again, be brief. Don't get too deep into it. And then she says, people are just drawn to her. People are drawn to her, meaning people are somehow attracted to her. People somehow really like her, okay? People are just drawn to her. She attracts people. She has lots of friends. People just like her very much. Now let's take a look at some expressions you can make use of when talking about your personal hero. My hero all throughout my life was my father. This is what Rachel said. This is a good one. If you have had one hero, if you wanted to be like someone, if someone was your hero from a long, 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 long time ago, you can say, my hero all throughout my life was blah, blah, blah. In this case, was my father. Another one is, I've always held a high opinion of my mom. Once again, if you remember, okay, to have or hold a high opinion of someone means hold a high opinion. Yes, you're thinking highly of them. You really look up to that person and respect this person. So this is another great way of talking about your hero. One more time, I've always held a high opinion of my mom, okay? Moving on to some more. Let's talk about what this person has done through good times and bad times. This expression, once again, through thick and thin, through thick and thin. Thick and thin, well, it sounds kind of rigid, so make a smooth pronunciation through thick and thin, through thick and thin, okay? One more time, he has helped me through thick and thin, thick and thin, meaning the good times and the bad times. What else do we have? In rain or shine, he or she has always been there for me. He's been there for me, meaning he's been there next to me. He was always there when I needed this person. But the most important thing is, as we said, through thick and thin, a similar expression is in rain or shine. Oops, here we go, in rain or shine. In rain or shine basically means the same thing as through thick and thin. Now imagine, what do you think it means? In rain, when it rains, it's gloomy, it's cloudy, and it's wet. So we're talking about the bad times, okay? And also, we're shining when the sun shines. It's a clear day, everyone's happy, and the sun is shining. That means a good situation. So when you say in rain or shine, it means through the good times and the bad times. During the good times and the bad times, okay? Now we've got some more. In good and bad weather. Very similar. In good and bad times is fine, but try using weather. In good and bad weather. Meaning, in the good days and the not so good days. Okay? Through good times and the difficult times, he or she has always been there for me. Okay? He or she was always there for me. Okay? And one more is, also, in the face of adversity. This is another word that you can make use of when talking about the good and the bad times. Adversity basically means a very difficult time. Okay? A difficult time. So, in the face of adversity, in the most difficult times, he or she has always been there for me. So, these are expressions you can use when talking about a certain person that has always been there for you no matter what. Whether it was for a happy day or a not so happy day. Okay? I think best friends are like this. They're there for you all the time, right? Okay, these are the expressions that we had so far. So keep in mind that adversity means a bad situation, a hurt condition, a very uh, well, difficulty you experience, and these are, these three are for the good and bad times. Let's take a listen to the actual talk between Peter and Rachel one more time. So Rachel, uh, the other day some people were asking me about my personal hero or having a discussion, and when they asked me, I, I had some trouble answering the question. So I want to pose that question to you. Oh, that's such a good question. You know, my hero all throughout my life was my mom. She is such a wonderful and intelligent woman. I always wanted to be just like her. She's mm -hmm. someone that helped me through thick and thin, you know, and she has a really charismatic uh, personality. People are just drawn to her. What about you? 
Now, in the latter part of the actual talk between Peter and Rachel, do you remember what they talked about? Well, Rachel asked Peter about his hero, right? And she says, do you have a hero? Or is there anyone you look up to? Meaning respect. Now, Peter says, well, there are people that I admire or maybe look up to a little bit. He says a little bit, not all the way, but just a little bit. But I didn't have one particular personal hero. So he's saying, well, there are several people that I've respected as I grew up and even now that I wouldn't say that I have one particular personal hero. And then let's find out what else they talk about. Rachel says, well, what are some qualities that you look for in a hero? In other words, what are some characteristics that you want to obtain, that you want to make yours, in other words, what you want to, uh, I guess, learn from this person. And then, well, Peter says, the people I admired throughout life, once again, ever since I was young up until now, were from various backgrounds. Background here, I think even in Korean we say pegyong, right? Background meaning the background or the environment that you are surrounded by. So, for example, some people may have grown up in wealth. Some people, the very opposite. Some people may have gone to school, graduated college, even went to grad school. Some people may not have had the opportunity for that kind of education. So, you can talk about people from various backgrounds. They grew up in different backgrounds and environments. And he said, and people that did many different things. So. I couldn't choose one, but I would pick something I liked about a particular person. So he's saying, I would pick something I liked about a person. And he gives an example, okay? An example was, like my advisor in college. This means he's now going to talk about his advisor in college, all right? Now, he was very open and liked to try new things. We're talking about this person's personality, remember? As we were going over the five W's, now this person is very open and liked to try new things. So, this person was perhaps very challenging, open to new things, so that inspired me to try new things in life. So his teacher was this kind of person, and he admired him for those reasons, so he did the same thing. That's what he's saying. One more time, he was very open and liked to try new things, so that inspired me to try new things in life. I tried to emulate those types of things. Now, what does emulate mean? Emulate means to copy. Not just copy something, but it means to copy one's actions. To do the same thing as someone else did. So that's what he's saying. This person was very open and tried new things, and so I wanted to copy. I wanted to emulate those, uh, those things. So he learned those things and wanted to be just like his teacher, I guess. All right? Now let's take a look at some expressions you can use when talking about who you look up to and perhaps about this person's personality, what this person has achieved. Let's say, for example, Bill Gates. Okay? You can say, I look up to so-and-so. Why? For devoting his genius to solving the world's biggest problems. So the pattern here is, I look up to someone for doing something. Okay? Always with an ing. I look up to A for doing something. His genius to solving the world's biggest problems. Of course, he has given up a lot of his fortune, and uh, he also has an organization to help the welfare of people around the world, perhaps to make a better world, so you can talk about that. What else do we have? Hmm. I idolize Jobs, Steve Jobs, for dragging the wireless carriers into the boxing ring. This is something that I got from the web, and whenever you look up Steve Jobs, I think you'll most likely see this, but I idolize meaning I look at Steve Jobs as an idol. He is my idol, we often say that. But instead of saying someone is my idol, say I idolize so-and-so for dragging the wireless carriers into the boxing ring. Now, a boxing ring is what? It's a square box, right? It's a square box that boxers box in. But in this case, we're talking about actual reality. So what has Steve Jobs done? Uh, well, he dragged the wireless carriers into the boxing ring. It was kind of a big challenge, okay? It was like gambling. So he made a huge difference, right, in the way people use hardware and software. So we're talking about that. Now, if this is too difficult, just look at I look up to someone for doing something or I idolize someone for doing something. Keep those patterns in mind, okay? Also, an easier one. I admire Bill Gates for the following reasons. If you admire someone for many, many reasons, for three reasons, for five reasons, or for more reasons, you can say, I admire, I respect, I have a high opinion of someone for the following reasons you're talking about. Reason one, two, three, four. This is a great way of starting to talk about it. And let's take a look at this one. I revere him or her on so many levels, meaning in so many ways. Revere also means to regard with respect, okay? Let's quickly take a look at some qualities you can talk about. Now, I'm drawn to Oprah Winfrey for her charisma. That is a quality. What are some other qualities? He or she has a magnetic. It's alluring, right? Or noble. Very, I guess, modest, okay? And another one is enigmatic. Something very mysterious about this person. Amiable, likable, and compelling personality. Try to make use of these words, okay, when talking about your hero, okay? Now, these are some qualities you can talk about. And one more is, uh, I try to emulate. Remember, emulate means to copy someone's actions. So you can say, I try to emulate those types of things. Or you can say, who? I try to emulate Bill Gates, meaning I try to do exactly as Bill Gates does. And then they continue on wrapping up the conversation, but they say, these are some great qualities that I look for in a hero. Remember, we took a look at the qualities. So after you mention the qualities of your hero, you can wrap up the talk by saying, these are some great qualities that I look for in a hero. Now, well, Peter says, well, Superman was my hero, but not really, meaning I don't have a specific hero right now. And then they continue on saying, well, someday I want to be a hero to my two sons. Remember, he's got two twin sons. So he says, I want to be a hero to someone. And Rachel says, I hope I'm a hero to my children too. And that was the end of the conversation. Now, quickly, let's take a look at two more expressions. You can say, someday, someday in the future, someday I want to be a hero to somebody. Okay. And last but not least, we have somewhere down the road I dream to be just like him or her the important expression here is somewhere down the road down the road means down the road right it basically means in the future so the next time you have a chance to say in the future try saying well somewhere down the road and on okay that is a wrap everyone let's listen to the actual talk between Peter and Rachel one more time so Rachel uh, the other day some people were asking me about my personal hero or having a discussion and when they asked me I I had some trouble answering the question. So I want to pose that question to you. Oh, that's such a good question. You know, my hero all throughout my life was my mom. She is such a wonderful and intelligent woman. I always wanted to be just like her. She's mm -hmm. someone that helped me through thick and thin, you know, and she has a really charismatic uh, personality. People are just drawn to her. What about you? Do you have a hero? Or is there anyone you, were, you looked up to? Well, when people ask me that, I, I would have to say that there are people that I admire or maybe look up to a little bit, but I didn't have any one particular personal hero. Okay. As a hero, somebody you almost worship in, in, in a way and, and really try to emulate their life. That's true. Well, what are some qualities that you look for in a hero? What are some characteristics that you want to obtain? Well, the people I admired through, throughout life uh, were from various backgrounds and did many different things. So I couldn't choose one, but I would pick something I liked about a particular person. Um, like my advisor in college, he was very open and, and um, 
likes to, to try new things. Oh, okay. um, so that inspired me to try new things in life. Um, when I followed somebody like Steve Jobs, the way uh, he was very driven, right. I, I, liked, uh, to, I tried to emulate those type of things. Yeah, you know, Steve Jobs seems like a really big role model for a lot of people these days, yeah. doesn't he? But, you know, like you said, people who are driven and open-minded, these are some great qualities that I look for, too, for a hero. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you were younger, you didn't have a specific hero, you said, right? No, no other than Superman. Oh, yeah, <laughs> really. he's a great hero. He has all the qualities that I feel like a hero does embody, doesn't mm -hmm. he? Well, someday I want to be a hero to my two sons. Me, too. I hope I'm a hero to my children, too. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was a lot of information for today's lesson, everyone. So let's take a breather. Let's take a break. Relax, shake your shoulders and your arms, and get ready for today's idiom. Today's idiom is, genius is 1% inspiration and 99% a 99% perspiration. And some people say 2%, 98%, 10%, 90%, but this is, I think, one of the most common idioms. So once again, genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Inspiration is what? It's like motivation. And perspiration is sweat. So here is a sample sentence. If you work hard, you could do just as well. Why? Because genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Let's take a look at the definition of this idiomatic expression. Basically means being a genius isn't just something you are born with. It is mostly 90% or 99% hard work. In Korean, it is 천재는 1%의 영광과 99%의 땀이다 라는 말이죠. So, 노력, motivation, and effort is most important. It's all about hard work. You can also say success is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Basically, people also say that talent is perspiration as well. Nobody is born with 100% genius, okay? So please do keep that in mind, everyone. That is a wrap for today's idiom. Let's move on to our next segment, actual interview. Who is your hero? Who do you admire the most? Why? Talk about a person who inspires you or someone who made a difference in your life. There are many heroes in this world. My hero is my mother. The reason that she is the most inspirational person in my life is because she helped me to stand where I am right now. She is a humble and kind woman where others look upon her. Everyone likes her. The reason that everyone likes her is because of her positive personality. Her positive personality made her to look everything in a positive way and be optimistic. She's able to put other situations before her. She always taught me to respect, and no matter what I think or what situation I'm in, always understand others. Therefore, the person that I most admire is my mother. She is a mentor and hero of my life. Well, today we had a familiar face, so welcome back to Actual Interview, and thank you for the wonderful talk about who your hero is. Well, that was her mother. Okay, let's take a look at the good points and the oopsies made in today's Actual Interview. The question was, first of all, who is your hero? Who do you admire the most and why? And talk about a person who inspires you or someone who made a difference in your life. So she said, first of all, a great point was, the reason that she is the most inspirational person in my life is because, so she talked about her mother being her hero, and she says, I will tell you why she is my hero. Now, because she helps me to stand where I am right now. Now, this gives me a strong feeling of great support. Her mother, I guess, uh, helped her through the and thin, right? Remember that expression? So her mother was always there for her and supported her all the way. Now, one thing that I did catch was she said, because she helped me to stand where I am right now. The two does not necessarily have to be there. You can take the two out, okay? So it's a minor, minor change, but keep that in mind. You can say, because she helped me stand where I am right now or today. Now, another great point she made was she is a humble and kind woman where others look upon her. Look upon her is very similar to look up to, respect, okay? So she is a humble and kind woman. We're talking about her personality, her characteristics, and her qualities as a person. Let's take a look at some oopsies. Oops number one is her positive personality made her to look everything in a positive positive way and be optimistic. Hmm. I guess it's just the beginning part of this. Her positive personality made her, the two is bothersome, it should not be there, look at things or look at everything in a positive way and be optimistic. Let's check out how you could change that. Even better, you can say, her positive personality makes her look or view things in a positive way and be optimistic. Makes her view things, see things in a much more positive way, okay? Okay, let's take a look at the second uh-oh or oopsie it is. She's able to put other situation before her. Do you understand what that means? I do, but this is a better way of saying that. She's able to put others before her or herself, okay? Here she said situation, but we're talking about peryo in Korean, right? Now, people sometimes put others before the meaning. They think maybe it is helpful to think of others before they think of themselves. So in that case, you can say, rather than situation, okay, you can say, she's able to put others before her or herself, all right? Uh, let's see, we do have one more. All right, that, that about does it, I think. So keep in mind, there are some minor mistakes that people often make, but don't worry too much. With our actual interviews, I'm sure that you could correct your mistakes little by little, and in the end, you'll be perfect in doing an interview in English. Okay, that wraps it up for actual interview, everyone, and now let's move on. Well, as it is time to wrap up today's lesson six about talking about your hero, a tip I do want to mention before saying goodbye. Now, in the beginning of today's lesson, I said be concise when you are talking about what you think about your hero, okay? So be concise, everyone. And here is another tip. A great practice is to write a letter to your hero. Of course, it can be someone that you've never met before, but your hero could be someone very close to you, like your professor or your parents, mom and dad, whoever. So imagine that you are writing a letter to your hero. Thank them, maybe tell them why you respect them, why or how you think so highly of them, okay? So write a letter, and uh, keep in mind, you don't necessarily have to send it, but writing this letter to your hero will actually help you gather your thoughts. So practice it, really. Write a letter, don't send it, but practice gathering your thoughts. 
about what you can say about this person, okay? Now, I did mention, when you talk about what you think of your hero, don't talk about the things, perhaps, um, that you've experienced. Not so much about you and what you think, but talk about your hero and what is so amazing about this person. I do want to say one more time, I do stress that it should be a succinct statement, much more than a flowery speech. So be brief and to the point, everyone. Okay, next time we'll be talking about eating out. It's a much more casual, I guess, topic. So we'll be talking about, perhaps, places we go to to eat out, um, whether you prefer to eat out or stay in or eat in, that would be the case. So that's our topic for next time. Keep posting up comments, messages, questions, you're more than welcome to post them up on our homepage as well. And thank you for your support as always. And that is a wrap for today, everyone. Enjoy, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.